Hemingway's Hills Like White Elephants. It is extremely dense and compact with technique and meaning. And, uh, and I want to get to it in a second, but to, to really understand it, I just want to cover the Freytag's Pyramid. Now, you should have had Freytag's Plot Pyramid in uh, 1102, but in case you didn't, let me break it down for you. You know, just think of any movie you've ever seen. Let's just use a horror movie, for example. Exposition, background information of the plot that includes character and setting. Generally, when you get that in a horror movie, it's right at the beginning. You get maybe a glimpse of, uh, you know, the killer's first killing or the monster's first killing. And then you move on to the main characters and whatever town they're in now. And you get to meet everybody and blah, 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 blah. All right. Then you get to the initial incident, the very first conflict that occurs in the plot. That's usually when... One of the main characters gets killed when they arrive at the cabin or the lake house or whatever it is, or they summon the demon or, or whatever. That's your, your, uh, uh, that's the thing that starts the problem. Okay. It's also called the complication. All right. Then you have, uh, the rising action. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, that's where the, the initial incident becomes a complication. It becomes more and more and more of a problem for the main character or main characters, often main character. And then you have the climax. Now, the climax is the majority of the movie, usually. That's when um, you, uh, you know, or the majority of like a, you know, like a horror film. That's when the main character is being chased and trying to survive. Now, how this relates to Hills Like White Elephants, what I want you to look at is it says the turning point for the protagonist character, for the protagonist, for the main character. It's the turning point. Okay. Now, following this, you have what you call uh, the falling action, which uh, includes uh, something that's not shown on this pyramid, uh, but it's also called, it's usually called the reversal. And the reversal is, you know, in the falling action, the reversal, that's when your main character has overcome the thing that it's in conflict with. In our example, horror movies. In the example of Hills Like White Elephants, uh, it's going to be uh, overcoming the male figure who's trying to convince the female figure to have an abortion. Okay. So the most interesting thing about this is, is the main character goes through a reversal. Like in a horror movie, the main character overcomes evil and becomes stronger, more competent, less fearful, not a victim anymore because of this. In Hills Like White Elephants, we're going to see a reversal in the female character and no change in the male character, which leads us to believe that the female character, Jig, is the protagonist of Hills Like White Elephants. Okay? Uh, then you have resolution. That's when the conflict is resolved and we discover whether the protagonist achieves their goal or not. And then you have uh, the, you know, the end, you know, the tying up of loose ends, the announcement. Uh, all right. Okay. Now, Hills Like White Elephants, how this relates. All right, so with uh, Hills Like White Elephants, there's a lot of technique going on. First of all, it's, mo it's modernism, so there's a lot of symbolism. For instance, uh, Hills Like White Elephants are supposed to represent the breast and uh, belly of a pregnant woman laying fat. In this case, our characters are white, so Hills Like White Elephants. Um, and this, the, like, this whole thing is made out of dialogue, almost. And so anytime you see a bit of prose or a paragraph in here, it's extremely important. Everything is symbolic, okay? So, for instance, um, uh, the, train is, the train tracks itself, uh, you know, there's a set of train tracks on each side of the station. One represents going to the city and having the abortion and what that means for their relationship. The other track represents going away from the city, not having the abortion, and what that means for the two characters' relationships. Uh, keep in mind, I'll also argue that Jig is the protagonist because we never get a name for the male character. Okay, So on one side of the station, we have no shade and no trees, in other words, death. On the other side of the station, we have uh, the, the hills and the valley and the river Ebro, uh, Ebro, uh, sorry, Ebro. And uh, you're going to see a little bit later on that it has fields of grain and trees and a river, which represents life. Women are also uh, uh, associated with rivers and the flow of life, menstrual flow, pregnancy, stuff like that, right? 
And then we have this uh, string of bamboo beads that keeps flies out. In other words, it keeps death out. In other words, bamboo beads, beads, rosary, religion, morality, keeps death out. Okay? Makes sense? Yes. Now, they're drinking, and yes, she is pregnant, and this is before people really knew about fetal alcohol syndrome. Okay? It also represents their kind of party lifestyle. Now, there's mostly dialogue here, and it's probably difficult to tell at some time, excuse me, it's probably difficult to tell at, at some time, you know, who, who's speaking and what's going on and, and, and all that good stuff. Uh, but you can see there's some tension here and, um, she is displeased. She's not happy. Uh, if you'll notice the male figure in the story is kind of dominant. He's the one that orders her and tells her what to do and explain things to her. He's leading the conversation He's trying to get her to have an abortion. He's trying to push her. You know, it's really an awfully simple operation, Jig. It's really, you know, uh, not an operation at all. I know you wouldn't mind it. You just, you know, let the air in. And that refers to when the, uh, the, the water sac during pregnancy is uh, busted and it lets the air in and the uh, fetus dies, right? And so he's trying to convince her that, you know, oh, I've known plenty of people that have, done it and they're all just happy they're all happy and everything's fine yeah right you know sure 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 right um, i'm sure there's no lasting pain or damage associated with this um, they'll just be happy you know so he's really trying to to push her and this is where it's interesting because at this point in freytag's pyramid you know we've got an exposition uh the conflict is this tension between them him trying to get her to have the abortion and this is where you have the, the climax, and it changes here. She changes because she goes through the conflict. A lot of people argue that she does have the abortion. I argue that she doesn't because of Freytag's pyramid, because she's the protagonist, and because protagonists go through reversal and their characters change. In the beginning, she is submissive. In the end, she becomes dominant, so I don't think she'll have the abortion. Uh, anyways, uh, here's that section about the death on one side and the life on the other. And you can see that she kind of leads a conversation at one point. You can see her eyes looking at both sides. Um, and, you know, she builds her argument. You know, we have the bags that represent their fun party lifestyle. They also represent the baggage of being a parent. And uh, we we can tell by this guy's demeanor that more than likely if she keeps the baby, he's out. And, uh, and the only way to really stay with him is to have the abortion. But after that, it won't be the same anymore. And she knows that. And that's pretty apparent in the conversation. Another thing is uh, they move the bags from where they're sitting to the other side of the tracks, uh, which indicates to me that, the, that her mind changed. And he also goes inside the bar to pout because he didn't get his way. He separates from her. Uh, so that tells me that he's not getting his way also. But I think you could argue it either way. And then at the end, she says, I feel fine. There's nothing with me. I feel fine. Some people argue that she's saying that because, you know, she's just like, I feel fine. And, you know, and somebody's not fine and they're saying they are. And some people argue it's because she decided to keep the baby. But my argument is for technique. Anyways, so this thing is full of symbolism, full of modernism. You can see individualism here. This isn't about greater society. It's about the person. And this is almost like a one-act play. It's almost completely dialogue-driven. And there hadn't been anything in fiction that's been really like that so far too much in, in popular culture. So it's also experimental. So I hope you enjoyed that. I know I spoke kind of quickly, but, you know, these lectures are, you know, I, I can only upload so much at a time. So, uh, so, uh, anyways, this is one of my favorite short pieces. I hope you enjoy it.